Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about client-to-site remote access VPNs with the Cisco AnyConnect client. So the Cisco AnyConnect client is a remote access VPN application which uses the ASA firewall. You saw in the last lecture when we configured the site-to-site -site VPN that the site-to-site -site VPN tunnels can terminate either on a firewall or a router the firewall would be the Cisco ASA. With the AnyConnect client, that's going to terminate on the ASA firewall, not on a Cisco router. And where the site-to-site -site tunnels were using IPsec, the AnyConnect remote access VPN uses TLS. Now, when you go to configure it, you're going to see that the option it has there is SSL because TLS and SSL are still somewhat used interchangeably. SSL is now actually deprecated, it's been replaced with TLS, but where TLS is used, you'll often see that it's actually still described as SSL. For example, if you buy a certificate for use on the internet, you'll see that it is being called an SSL certificate, even though it is actually TLS that is being used. So just be aware if you do see SSL being mentioned anywhere, that's fine. You are actually going to be using TLS because TLS is the update for SSL. And you can see here a screenshot of using the client. So with the example topology, we've got our main site over here on the right. And because AnyConnect, it is a remote access VPN. It's a client to site VPN. So you can have this installed on your laptop. So if you go traveling anywhere, if you're in, say, a hotel, or if you're working from home, you can fire up the AnyConnect client on your laptop, as you can see here, and from there, you can connect into the corporate site. When you do that, the VPN tunnel is going to terminate on the ASA firewall. So the traffic is going to be encrypted all the way from your laptop over to the ASA firewall. So if you are working in a hotel or somewhere like that, that's fine because it's not just from the router at the hotel, it's actually from your laptop, the traffic is going to be encrypted, because obviously the network infrastructure in the hotel, you're not going to be trusting that either. Okay, so that's the AnyConnect VPN client. Now, there's a couple of different ways that this can be enabled, and this is going to be chosen by the network security administrator. You can either use split tunneling or full tunneling. When you use split tunneling, the corporate traffic is going to go over the VPN tunnel to the corporate site. Your public web traffic, for example, when you're browsing normal sites on the internet, that is going to go out directly to the internet. That is not going to go through the tunnel. So as you can see here, when we do have split tunneling enabled for traffic that is going to the corporate website, that is going to go through the VPN tunnel and that is going to be encrypted. But when we're browsing to a normal internet web server, that is going to go out directly. It's not going through the VPN tunnel. The other way that we can do it is with full tunneling. Now with full tunneling, both your corporate traffic and your normal internet browsing from your client are going to go through the VPN tunnel. So you can see the difference here now is traffic that's going to the corporate office is going through the VPN tunnel. Traffic going to a public web server out on the internet, that also goes through the tunnel as well, and then it gets hairpinned back out of there out to the internet. So the reason why you would use one or the other, if you implement full tunneling, that forces all traffic to go through the VPN tunnel and go through the main site. So that allows you to enforce security policies on your staff members when they're out traveling with their laptops. For example, you could specify the types of websites that they're allowed to go through. So because everything is going through your centralized main site here, you can enforce security policies at that point. The downside of using full tunneling is that maybe the user 
is in Chicago, your head office is in New York, and we're browsing a website which is also in Chicago. Well, if they, they were using split tunneling, that would just go out straight from Chicago to, to Chicago. It wouldn't have to go all the way through the tunnel to the head office and back again, so you would get better performance. So you can get better performance if you're using split tunneling, but you can get better, more centralized security if you use full tunneling. Okay, that's everything as far as the CCNA exam is concerned for our remote access VPNs. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.